Friends and neighbors, I am Kim, along with uh, Donna. I was going to call you Sherry. <laughs> she looks Donna, like she does. Hey, that could be sister. And Kelly, and we are getting ready just to dive right in because we. I just want to make sure we have enough time to talk about your testimony. We're talking about children of dreams. Laura Lynn Roberts, welcome to Friends and Neighbors. Thank Real, you. Just your testimony, Kelly. We were just talking, mm -hmm. blows our minds. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I just want you to kind of just dive right in and give us some background before we get into the book. Well, I will just start kind of in the beginning. I, um, my mom and my um, father divorced when I was two, so I didn't know my father for until um, I turned 30. And um, wow. so she was a single mom, and she remarried when I was 10. But there were, you know, during those years, there was a lot of loss. And mm -hmm. uh, then when she got remarried, um, I was adopted, and so adoption is a big part of my life. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's the book. <laughs> it's the book, and I always liked it. When I wrote the book, I thought about God's adoption of us. That was kind of my, my theme for writing the book. So anyway, I had a lot of loss as a child, and then when I got married, I wanted my husband to kind of make up for, for some of those losses. Right. And he was, mm -hmm. he, you know, went to medical school. He was the rescue type. And... Um, so I, 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 you know, was married and thought my life was going to be wonderful mm -hmm. and I was going to have kids and the doctor's wife and kind of, you know, live the, the dream. The, live the dream, you know. And I was a Christian, but we didn't have a Christian marriage. And I'm not sure that he was a Christian and so there was no growth. Mm -hmm. Well, he um, had an affair with his, some, someone in his department is a, is a uh, resident after I put him through medical school. And it absolutely devastated me, sure. absolutely devastated me. And so consequently, we went through a divorce. And the hard part was he got her pregnant while he was still married to me, and I couldn't get pregnant. Mm. So, uh -oh, that it, sounds very you know, biblical so too, obviously, <laughs> I'm, I'm 30 years old. My husband is, you know, left me. I can't get pregnant. She's having his baby. I just really didn't want to live anymore. Sure. Mm. I can totally I had given up my that. college career to put him through medical school, and I had to go back to doing a job, which was court reporting, which I really didn't like. Did you get um, better? I, I went through every emotion mm. that everybody would go through. I was angry. Mm -hmm. I was bitter. I felt very insecure. My, my birth father had left us when I was a baby. I'd never met him. And here my husband had left me, and he I just abandoned. was mm -hmm. absolutely... Right devastated, felt abandoned, felt like God doesn't love me, um, just, just rejection. Yeah. And it, I almost wanted to take my life. Mm, I mean, I, sure. just, I just did not want to live anymore. I was just like, I, I, there's nothing to live for. What do I have to mm. live for? You know, I'm worthless. I'm no good. Mm. And God, God, you know, he, I had some, I was in a church. We had tried going to a church a few times. I kind of dragged him to church. But I made the commitment, I'm going to go to church, and I'm going to get counseling. Mm. And those are the, the best decisions mm. that I could have made. I mean, I didn't know what I was looking for, but I knew I didn't have what I needed. You know what I mean? And they, I was in a, a very um, Bible-believing church, and they told me, you, you, what you need to pray, you need to get in the Bible. Get if the you word. come mm. into our prayer meeting every week, we will pray for you. And it, it was amazing. It was amazing how God just reached down and the just, love. Yeah. just these people loved me like I had never been loved. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't know that people could love like that. I'd never been around Christians. We, we didn't have a Christian marriage. And even though the home was a moral home growing up, it wasn't a Christian home. We didn't go to church. And so it was the first time in my life I had really been with Christians. And um, I read the book of Romans and it just rev <laughs> revolutionized my life. Yeah, Romans great. is such an incredible book. And so slowly, a little bit at a time, I started seeing, you know, I'm not bad. God loves me. Other people love me. They care about me. They, they care enough to pray for me, you know, to spend time with me. And I'd never had that. I just did not have, I just, it, I don't you know. You didn't have it, that one-on-one -on -one right. human 
love. Really, you really right. couldn't count on right mm -hmm. exactly. People. Yeah. And so eight years went by. That was I was 30 when when I got divorced, and um, I went back to school, got that degree that I'd given up, so mm -hmm. I could put my ex-husband through medical school, and worked full time as a court reporter, and was very involved in church, working with children. But I found no matter how much I did at church with kids, it wasn't enough. Mm. I just you so wanted children. desperately wanted to be a mom. I mean, I just, that was my heart that from the time I was a little girl, I wanted to be a mom. And there was just no way I could, could replace that with anything else. And I couldn't get pregnant. So it's mm. like, it seemed like, God, you know, please, you know, make, make it possible it somehow, you know. Mm. It really was, and then um, I actually met a very nice Christian man and got engaged, and then I just had second thoughts about that, and I broke off the engagement, but I was stronger then, so I, I made the decision. It wasn't like I was devastated like I've been before, but I just felt like I need to be who God has called mm -hmm. me to be and not be looking for somebody out there to make me a complete Amen. person. Right, right. And so I just didn't feel like that was the direction God was leading me in. So I went ahead and I finished my, got my college degree. And I, the only thing I really wanted was children. And I, I asked people, well, you know, what about adopting? Oh, but you're not married. And, you know, people weren't really very encouraging in that way. So I just kind of thought about it but didn't pursue it. And then one day I got this letter from World Vision in the, in the mail. Mm -hmm. I was also sponsoring a couple of kids, you know, trying to meet that need, which is a wonderful, wonderful organization. It's wonderful. And they sent me this letter and they talked about how many, I think it's 150 million orphans mm -hmm. wow, in the world. That's a lot. And they began the letter with Proverbs 13:12. And it goes, hope deferred makes the heart Heartful sick. Yeah. But when dreams come true at last, there's life and joy. And that's my verse in there. I had no and, idea yeah, that was your verse. And, I, <laughs> and that was in this letter in 1993, I guess it was, 1992. And I put it on my refrigerator and I said, someday I'm going to adopt a child. I don't know when, but I'm going to. And it sat on my refrigerator for two years. And I just couldn't, I just didn't have that, you know, feeling like it was the right time. Well, then my adoptive father got a brain tumor, and I was going back and forth from Gainesville to Atlanta to visit with him. And I thought, you know, we only live once. We're all terminal. You know, we just don't know when. And, you know, Now's the I time. think God wants me to do this. If I wait, you know, where am I going to be 10 years from now? I need to, you know, if God's validating in my heart, this is what he wants me to do. Why do I have to have that validated by Absolutely. somebody else? And so I started looking around at agencies. And I found an agency in Castle Rock, Colorado, and I called them. And it was one of the things that struck me about them was they were working with an evangelical pastor in Nepal, and his only requirement was they had to be evangelical Christians because he was a pastor over there, and he wanted these orphans Place placed in, children. in um, Christian homes. And so I contacted them, and it was like, bam, bam, bam. I mean, you talk about a confirmation. It was so fast. If you know anything about Nepal, it takes years. Mm. I mean, it is a very complicated process. And it just, I mean, from February, I, I got the, um, sent my paperwork into the agency in February. In April, I was on a plane going to wow. Nepal. It was two months, the whole process, which is unheard of. My second one, which we can talk about later, took three years. <laughs> so, you know, for those that are in the waiting process, I know what that's like yeah. to hang mm -hmm. in there. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. Just, you know. So I know I've kind of done a lot of background here, and, and but I just, you know, God is good. He is so good. God all gives the time. us what we want. We may not know exactly how, and sometimes He does things in different ways of It's what literally we hope deferred. It, it is. It's it just is. deferred. It doesn't it mean it's dead. Right. It is. And so I, I ended up, I, of course, I went to, ne to Nepal and adopted Manisha, got over there. They weren't going to do the adoption because I wasn't old enough. I was 38 years supposed to be 40. And so I ran into all these problems and I just kept, you know, praying to God, God, you brought me all the way over here. You didn't abandon me. You're not going to leave this little girl here three years old, you know, mm. as an orphan, I know you didn't bring me all the way over here. So we ended up having to go to the prime minister in Nepal to get special permission, you know, and God just opened the doors. He just mm. opened the doors all the way through. 
and I came home on Mother's Day, November, uh, May 8, 1994, we arrived home on Mother's Day. Um, on a mother. Um, yes. And then you yeah. adopted another one, Joy. And then I adopted another one, Joy, and of course in the middle of that, we had a major medical emergency with Manisha, and for those that might watch Monsters Inside Me, they featured Manisha's medical condition on their show. If you ever catch that, you might see us on there. What, she, what is her medical condition? What happened was, is four and a half years after she was adopted, she had a huge seizure. Mm -hmm. She was totally unconscious, and I thought she had died. It was it was very, very scary. It was horrible. I mean, it was horrible. And I, I remember she was laying on the floor unconscious, and we were waiting for the ambulance to come. And I remember thinking, God, God, where are you? Mm. Where are you, God? I'm a single mom. I need you. And the interesting thing was, is the person sitting behind me, we were at a, like an ice, um, kind of an ice show thing down in Gainesville. The person sitting behind me that realized she'd had a seizure was a pediatric neurologist oh. nurse. She was a pediatric neurology nurse. Can you believe how That's, God just yes. provided yes, this I person? I, I mean, totally it's just, <laughs> and her last name was Miracle. Yes. Oh <laughs> it just, oh, I know, it just, God is, you know, he's yes. amazing. But anyway, we went to the hospital, we spent nine days in the hospital and found out that she had a parasitic infection. Mm. But the difficulty was the diagnosis. They were worried she had a brain tumor. Right. Mm. This happened on the fifth, Year, the five-year anniversary of my my adoptive my adoptive father's death from the brain tumor that he had to the very so hour like almost tumor, five tumor. years later, and and then they did the <coughs> CT and they thought she had a brain tumor, and so I, I can't begin to tell you how how scared I was. But you know what? I laid in the hospital that night in the bed. Manisha, uh, Manisha was in the bed there, and I, God just said, Lori. Manisha is going to be okay. Uh -oh. Manisha is going to be okay. And I was scared to believe it. You know how you think God sometimes says things to you? And like, am I supposed to claim that or am I just imagining that? You know, and I was almost afraid to believe it because, like, how could that possibly be true? Right, you know, right. but it was. Manisha today, she's 19. Yeah. Yeah. She's <laughs> second year in college. I homeschooled her through, all through school, and um, she's doing great. She wants to study psychology. Imagine why she'd want to do that, mm -hmm. right, after having a, a brain condition. Um, no more seizures. Praise the Lord. She is one beautiful young lady. She's wow. not here today because she's in college, and she couldn't come up with us from Florida. Well, tell us about Joy. You said that was a little bit of well, a longer journey. Yes. What happened was when Manisha had this seizure, I already had my plane ticket to go to, to Vietnam to leave. And of course, what am I going to do? My daughter's had this seizure. Right. Now they're questioning this diagnosis. Is it really this parasitic infection? Because this was a year later. Wow. And we had been three years on this adoption journey to adopt Joy. I had been through several referrals that had fallen through for whatever for whatever reason. And I, and then this happens. I'm like, I can't leave Manisha here. I can't, I can't go. This was Y2K. If I did not complete wow. the adoption by the end of 1999, it wasn't going to happen. It, you, it, it's so complicated with the paperwork. It was all expiring and they were not going to let me do the adoption past December 31st. Mm -hmm. And so I had to, like a couple of weeks here. We had to figure out, does she have to have brain surgery, you know, what am I going to do? I'm a single mom, you know. And so um, we went to Yale and they confirmed. Wow. The Dr. Hostetter said, you are free to go to Vietnam. I feel very certain this is neurocystosicosis. Go get your other daughter. You can take Manisha. You can leave her here or whatever. And so that gave me the confirmation. Of course, I think God healed her. I honestly think God, I God healed. I mean, I there's no doubt my doctors talk in their doctor language, hey, I'm going to claim the Lord's healing. That's I right. know. Mm. You know you know in your heart. And so I went to Vietnam, got over there, and the first thing I find out when I get over there, um, you're, the, the mother ha has gone into hiding and she wants money, and it, we, it, we think mm. she kidnapped this baby. I get into this whole this whole kind of scenario that I'm all the way over there. Three years later, all this thousands of dollars. And I just poured my heart out to God over there. I, I, I just said, God, if you only want me to have one child, I'm going to go home and love that one child that you have given me. And I'm not going to pursue this anymore. And you know what? I went back to the hotel room, got the call that, that joy was available, that it just circumstances had happened after I gave it up. After I think sometimes you we know, have to give oh, up. You're what to be a beautiful yeah. girl. Beautiful you know. girl. Well, and that's why you've written the book. I mean, adoption right. is is. is 
was, was your answer to your right, prayer. Right, exactly. And right. so many people right. are adopting today. Right. So many people are adopting because, there's, like you said, there's how many orphans? Over 150, 150 million orphans. Good night. Yeah. A hundred and fifty yeah. million. I orphans. believe I'm right on that. I, I, I may be speaking. My, I, I can't remember exactly, but it's that are you number still sticks. a single mom? I'm still a single mom, and you know what? I, whatever God brings along. I You're am good. very content being yes. a single mom. I'm I'm actually working on my master's in creative writing. I do closed captioning for television. It's really strange <laughs> to be sitting here. I'm usually writing Type, on my little right, machine. Right, right. <laughs> Maybe you can do the closed caption for this. When I'm going to see if they're any good. <laughs> when we're going to come back from break, I absolutely. Can we meet Joy? Is she sure. going to come and join she's, us? Yes, she is here and she's watching. And I told her to pray for me because <laughs> well, now she can join often, you. So. We'll be yeah. right back with more friends and neighbors right after this. Friends and neighbors, we're talking with Lori Lynn Roberts about children of dreams, adoption. What a great testimony. What Thank an absolute you. testament to God's faithfulness. Absolutely. And, and I love your life first hope deferred makes the heart grow sick. And what he does is he gives you that hope in his time That's right. and gives That's you right. that dream in his time. He does. And now we're, Joy is joining us. Hey, Joy. Hi. Now, you adopted her as an infant, correct? She was 13 months, 14 months. 14 months, and now she's 12 years old. Wow. Yeah. wow. She's a level eight gymnast, competitive wow. gymnast. Wow. Wow. So, Mom, let me ask yeah. you something. What has being a mother ta taught you? You wanted it for so long, mm. but what is it teaching you? Well, it's humbled me, <laughs> made me realize how dependent I am on God, how much God loves me. God's our Heavenly Father. Yes. He loves us so much, and as I love my children, I realize how much God loves us, His children. It, it's amazing how much God loves us, and I just humble that God loved me to give me these two mm. wonderful, beautiful children. I just, every day I think, God, I know I, I fail in so many ways. I'm an imperfect mom. They will tell you I am not perfect. But there you know, my no heart is I, no. I, I love them so much. Yes. And you know what? Yes. God loves them even more. Absolutely. Yes. And, and he knew what was, who he wanted me to be their mother. I think every child is put with every, every parent that it's preordained, planned from the beginning with every adoption. It is orchestrated by, by God. God. Yes. Well, the two yeah. books are Children of Dreams and The Donkey and the King. I see that this is a, a children's book. Yes. And I got to tell you, you are a blessing and a mm -hmm. testament to waiting on the Lord and surrendering. Sometimes when, like you said, when you let it go, mm -hmm. it's when your answer comes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And Joy, thank you for having for coming on and being with us. We appreciate it. <laughs> we really do. And Lorna, just real quick, how can people get a hold of you if, they, if they're wanting the books? If they would like to uh, go to my website, I have lots of articles, poems, um, I homeschool, encouragement. What is your website real quick? It's Lorelyn Roberts, L-O-R-I-L-Y-N, Roberts.com. Dot com. Yeah. And we want to thank you for joining us for this episode of Friends and Neighbors. Be blessed and know that God loves you and so do we.